defending against John Doherty. Doherty held the title himself for three months in 86 before losing to Pat Cowdell. It's been a tough road back since then with a succession of demoralising injuries. Havard wrenched the title from Cowdell last year and entered the ring tonight unbeaten. If he wins, he's on for a shot at the European crown. Commentators again, Jim Watt and Jim Rosenthal. We join it in round three. Third round and... Havertz corner, really having a go at him in the minute intermission, urging him to snap out of it and to step up the quality and speed of his work. And to stop pouring with the, the South Ball lead and really to put a bit of a, a twist at the end of those punches. Seems to me he might have something of a psychological barrier to overcome here, Jim. Yeah, well, Doherty enjoys counter-punching. He enjoys uh, letting the man come to him and doing some evasive work of his own. But uh, Harvard's a very cute, uh, very frustrating opponent. The southpaw stands just adds to his awkwardness. And uh, I think Doherty is trying to force the action. It's not his normal way of boxing. And he's been picked off now and again by Harvard. Very, very precise puncher. Doherty had a tilt at the European crown earlier this year and in fact had his nose broken challenging a Rashid Lawal in Denmark and has had that tendency to cut in recent fights Doherty but unmarked at the moment tendency to mark up around the eyes in particular been a long time coming this first offense for Floyd Havard hoping to be the first Welsh world champion since the great Howard Winston just over 20 years ago good shots from Havard best shots of the fight so far and there was a big wobble in the Doherty legs above us he's a great survivor is Doherty but he won't want to take too many more combinations like that and Havard senses he could be in for a quick night's work here well, Harvard certainly the, the more accurate puncher of the two all the way through. He's been more accurate, more controlled. And uh, Doherty, as I said, is trying to force the pace. It's not suiting him. And uh, Harvard has really moved into the driving seat in this round. Great round for the Welshman. I'm not sure that Doherty's got the power to hurt him, really. See, Harvard has a, a great technique of uh, moving out of punching range, but uh, he's just, just in range to come back with counters. Uh, Doherty's finding it very difficult to land any worthwhile punches. They're all falling short, but he's still in range for Harvard's punching, and he's beginning to become a little frustrated now. Definitely Harvard's best round so far. Well, it's a good atmosphere here at Avan Lido. John Doherty, four inches shorter, four years older, in big trouble in that last round. Only a couple of fights in the last two years, John Doherty, and this is proving to be a tough challenge for him. And these were marvellous moments from Havard, Jim. Well, well, yeah, Havard moved up a gear in this round. He's been very accurate all the way through, but he's kept the pace down. That was a lovely punch. Had Doherty in all sorts of trouble. But they see very precise in his punching. When he starts to back Doherty up, Doherty loses all his rhythm, all his coordination, and he's under severe pressure. Boyd Havard looking very relaxed in his corner. And they're blowing heavily in his ear, though. The fourth round, Floyd Havard needs a confidence booster after all his hand trouble and a couple of fairly laborious victories last season. And he's looked good here tonight. A little slow start coming on strongly in the third round. And now we just wonder if he can prov provide his home fans here with something spectacular. Certainly he's looking uphill for John Doherty at the moment. I remember 
working on that fight in Preston and he showed magnificent resilience fought all the way through badly cut and took it on points against Pat Doherty great fight that one Doherty is a, a really gallant little batter. Right. I have to keep a close watch on uh, Doherty's forehead and round his eyebrows because he has got a big tendency to mark up there. And he's just looking a little bit puffy there at the moment. No small wonder because Habert's punches have been really accurate he's just that bit stronger and his punches seem to be hurting more Abbott. Doherty seems to be doing everything he can possibly do to stay in the fight yet you always get the impression that uh, Havard has much more to offer that you know, he still has another gear to move up he seems so controlled his punches all the way through have been finding their target and uh, Doherty under more pressure now is becoming a little bit erratic. He's lost all his rhythm. And uh, you can't do that against uh, such a precise boxer as Harvard. Well, the crowd trying to lift Floyd Hammond here, but he's doing pretty well and I'm just looking very carefully up there I'm not sure if Doherty is, might just have picked up a bit of damage around his left eye we'll have a look at that at the end at the end of this round perhaps we've been warning you about that throughout the fight but Havard it's Havard's round once again despite all Doherty's hard work. Well, Doherty uh, flopping down there. It's uh, doing a little bit of work around that left eye. Whether it's actually open yet, I'm not sure. But he's got a history of damaging around there. And... Uh, it looks as though Habert could be exploiting that weakness here tonight. <laughs> Round six then, you're watching a battle for the British super featherweight title, nine stone four. Habert coming in at 9-3, the champion from Wales in the red and white. And John Doherty at 9-1. And Havard building up a substantial points lead against the former champion from Bradford, the 27-year-old Doherty. And now, in the second half of this fight, we just will watch and wait to see if Havard has the firepower to finish him or if Doherty is going to wrestle the fight round his way. Doherty doing some useful work inside there, Jim. Yes, well, Havard lost a bit of control in the previous round. He, he must step up a gear now, uh, try to contain Doherty. Doherty's confidence must have been boosted. A lot of success in the previous round. Doing the same things. He, he's not doing anything clever that he wasn't doing earlier on. But he's just so persistent. Uh, I don't know if it was a loss of concentration on Havard's part, but he's going to have to get his concentration back. If that's what it was, and start meeting Doherty with a jab, or he's going to be in for a real battle. And make no mistake about it, Doherty is a battler. Doherty's corner will be well pleased by the way he's stayed in this fight. for the first time Havard just looks a little bit uncomfortable holding on and getting tagged Doherty's still maintaining the pace 
So, so he obviously fancies the action and the fight is taking a little swing in Doherty's favour now. Havertz uh, counter-punching with single shots and there's no chance he's going to discourage Doherty like that. He's going to have to put punches together. He's going to have to put a bit of power into the punches, a bit more authority and try to drive Doherty back. But at this point, uh, Doherty's come right back into the fight. I wouldn't be surprised if Havertz's hand isn't giving him bother again. Just seems to be checking that right hand every time he throws it. Doherty's his best round undoubtedly and he could even have done enough to steal it. And Havard knows he's got a real scrap on his hands if he wants to hang on to his title. Just a bit of concern creeping into that corner now. Floyd Hammond. He had a really good couple of rounds earlier in the fight. They looked to be going his way completely. Just a few creases of concern on his forehead now. I've still got him quite substantially ahead on points. But John Doherty, what a tough little battler he is. Refusing to give way. He's been around and he's been on the receiving end of one or two beatings but he desperately wants this title back again and although he's not as skillful technically he's got a huge heart and he's still well in the fight been a big warning delivered to Floyd Havard but if he doesn't snap out of it he's going to lose his title here and certainly as the fight progresses it's getting closer and closer all the time because Havard hasn't had a winning round for a while see Havard seems to be trying to find an easy way to beat Doherty but I don't think that exists he needs a lot more authority and he's working and he's punching now, this is not a his normal boxing. These little single slick counter punches are nice to look at, but uh, we're in the second half of the fight. Uh, now is the time you should really be trying to get control of the action. And it's been quite the opposite. He's backing off now. Conflicting stories here at ringside. Uh, Havertz manager Frank Warren is telling us that he has got problems with his hand. So perhaps his corner manager is trying to camouflage that. And I've seen, I've seen Havard do this in his last couple of fights where he's seen opponents that he might feel he can't put away, Jim, and he's said, OK, I'm not going to put this guy away, I'll settle for a points win. And could it be that Havard is using those tactics again now? No, I've seen him do that in a fight that he's well winning and he's thoroughly in control of, and he's just settled maybe for a points win and realises he's not going to knock the other fellow out. But you can't really say he's in total command here. But for almost four rounds now, there's been no authority in his work. Just little slick punches, uh, he's moving around well on his feet. He's forcing Doherty to miss, but uh, really it's a negative performance from Harvard in the last uh, three or four rounds. Well, certainly the big crowd that gave Floyd Havard a huge ovation when he came into this ring here. I've been silenced by John Doherty. And that, one of the prime aims of any fighter when he goes into an opponent's backyard, is to silence the crowd. And the feeling is beginning to dawn that John Doherty might just upset all the odds here and get his title back. Would you believe it? has massive problems and he's now bleeding from his nose as well
problems for Floyd Hammond. Let's just have a word with uh, Floyd's manager, Frank Warren. He's talking now to Gary Newbon. Frank, let's just clear it up. Has he got a problem with his hand, Floyd? You know, Floyd has suffered with his right hand in the past, and at the moment he's just throwing single shots. Normally he throws the combinations, and that's really what's happening. He's letting Dockley really get into the fight. Instead of dictating the fight, Dockley's they're coming to him. Normally Floyd would keep him at bay, that type of fight. But does he have an actual problem with his hand at this stage? Yeah, he's had a problem with his hand. It looks like he's got a bit of a problem there. He's not throwing as many shots as I'd like to see him throwing, that's for sure. So what's Floyd got to do now? Well, really, if he wants to win this fight, he's got to go out and he's got to throw shots. It's the tenth round of this British title fight. Floyd Havard, the champion, making his first defence. The unbeaten Welshman started off so well, he looked a formality. He's got hand trouble, and his fight plan has been disintegrated by John Doherty, the determined former champion from Bradford, who has fought a tremendously gallant fight and could well be on his way to a points victory against all the odds. And that's going to upset a lot of planning for Havard. But Doherty has looked frisky. He's looked strong. He's survived a bit of damage around his left eye. And he's now coming on exceedingly strongly in the closing stages. Doherty could win this fight just on work rate alone. Either Havard can or he won't match uh, Doherty for pace. And unless uh, Havard changes his tactics, either gets back to his own boxing or starts trading with some punches here, he's going to lose his title. Doherty still full of fire, full of fight. His performance has got better as the fight has gone on, so he must really be feeling confident at this point. Well, Floyd Havard apparently complaining of fatigue in his corner. And I'm glad that the crowd around me don't know that because that would dispirit him even more and give more encouragement to the battler from Bradford, John Doherty. And Doherty is continuing the pattern here. We could be in for a huge upset. No one thought Doherty had the firepower to stay with, with Havard. They thought his career was on a downward trend. But so far, he's proving them all wrong and is suggesting we've got a big, big upset in the making as a new boxing season gets underway. Minute to go. Bob May, our statistician. Interesting fact that Doherty has been the full 12 rounds twice and it's going to be new territory for Floyd Havard. And if he's tired, those last couple of rounds, Jim, are going to feel like a marathon. Yeah, I think as well as being tired, he's broken-hearted. Obviously, he has hand damage. Things aren't going according to plan. He can't box his normal fight. And uh, Doherty, full of heart, full of fighting, just won't give him a second's piece. So I think, as, as well as being tired, he, he's almost heartbroken too. And unless he comes up with something soon, he's definitely going to lose this title. I don't think he's had a good round since about the fourth or fifth round. It's gone full circle now. The champion Floyd Havard needs something spectacular to hang on to his crown in the last couple of rounds. <laughs> Floyd Havard can't believe what's happening to him on his home ground. He's going to need to dig very deep. He's going to need to produce something absolutely exceptional. His unbeaten record is hanging by a thread. So is his British title. So are his dreams of a European and then a world title. And by the look of him, he knows it. And John Doherty, the former champion, whose career looked to be going nowhere, is all set to reclaim the super featherweight title. But there are still two rounds to go, and anything can happen in this game. And it just goes to show there's no such thing as a short fire certainty. Two rounds to go in this British title fight that has got a few people here at ringside shaking their heads and saying, we cannot believe what we're seeing here. Because Floyd Hammond, one of the great stylists 
one of the real prospects on his home territory, unbeaten, a 23-year-old, is staring defeat in the face. And John Doherty has been the governor up there in the blue trunks for a good five or six rounds. Not enough has come back from Havard, and I think he's quit. He's quit. Havard says that'll do, and Doherty is the champion. Havard waving his right hand, saying he can't go on. He's lost his title, he's lost his unbeaten record, and John Doherty has reclaimed the British Nine Stone Four title. There's elation in his corner, and he fought a really brave fight and ruined all the plans that Floyd Hubbard had laid. He's got it back, the jinx remains, and well, John Doherty, you've got to really say, Jim Watt, that he deserves every bit of elation and every bit of success he gets from his performance here. Yeah, right from the opening bell, Doherty never stopped working, he never stopped trying to hassle and pressurise the champion. And the, the previous round, Harvard had the look of a man, as we said, uh, whose heart had been broken, and that's exactly what happened. He could no longer continue. His hand troubled him from the early stage. A great performance from young Doherty. And this is where it ended. And all the speculation about whether Harvard had, had a hand problem or not confirmed there. Look at he shook his right hand and said, I cannot go on. Cliff Curvis, steward of the British Boxing Board of Control, the former British welterweight champion, puts the Lonsdale belt around the waist of John Doherty. The first champion is the new champion. Floyd, when did that hand go? The right hand. I went in the fourth round again, but um, I'm very, very disappointed. Um, I really can't say uh, what my future holds. Um, I'm very disappointed, man. But um, it's not worth me carrying on as far as uh, boxing is concerned, if it's going to carry on. So as far as my future is concerned, I don't know what's to happen. Um, well, it sounds, Floyd, from what you've said, as if you don't have a future, if your hand's going to keep going. Yeah, well, this, this, this seems to be the thing now. Um, as I say, I'm very, very disappointed. Um, I'll, ta I'll take uh, defeat graciously. Uh, very great today. You're a good champion. He deserved the fight to win. But um, why did you feel you had to quit at the end? I mean, just tell us how much pain you were in. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a pain that I can't really uh, describe to you. But every time I was connecting, um, there's too much pain there for me. And uh, it, it's 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 one of those things that a boxer's plagued with, you know. But um, I'm very disappointed for the fans more than anything because I know that they were behind me all the way, even if I'd gone all the way. Um, I think I had the spirit to carry on, I had the stamina to carry on, but as far as uh, pain is concerned, it was much much too much, you know. So um, what the future holds on for Floyd Albert, I've got no idea. Unbeaten and then you suddenly lose it like that and you worry about your future. It's a terrible way to finish and lose the championship. It, it is. Um, Maybe a couple of days or maybe a couple of weeks rest, and uh, I'll I might decide my future then with Frank or whatever. But maybe but not though, Floyd. Maybe not the way my hand is at the moment. I can continue. Uh, maybe I try to keep myself as far as um, as far as training is concerned. I, I train very hard. I train very hard, but um, not as hard as I, I should have. And the defeat I will take graciously to okay. a good champion. Thank you. John, were you aware, first of all, congratulations, but were you aware that his hand had gone in the fourth round? Well, no, I didn't know his, his hand had gone at all. But I thought we were winning the fight with pressure. I thought we were keeping on top of him and tiring him, just pressuring him. The fight had to fight. I thought we had the box all the time, but I changed it around, showed him different. It looked on paper as if it was going to be a one-sided thing because Havard's never lost, but your yeah. tactics were obviously right tonight. Not, no, not the way you normally yeah. box, actually. No, I didn't actually, no. But I'm very strong for my weight. I can even do uh, featherweight. I might even move down there, you never know. Actually, you better suit as a featherweight well, size-wise. Well, yeah. Sure enough. So what are you going to do? Are you going to go back to featherweight or are you going to yeah, stay with this title? I'm going to fight, yeah. yeah. Daniel Londis, I think, the champion. is a European. The European. Yeah. Champion. Then the featherweight. Yeah. But, but you fought for the European in March and had your nose broken and you, you've lost yeah, this title before. Yeah, I'm fortunate there. Uh, we're going quite well as you swung a shot 
I moved out of range and it just caught the end of my nose and pushed it right over here, so I couldn't carry on with it. I didn't get knocked down even. I moved out of range and went back to my corner. It's still bleeding your noses, by the way. Well, it always does. <laughs> You, you've got to be uh, a little bit surprised, though. You couldn't have gone in that fight being as confident as you are now. Uh, yeah, I was, I was honestly. I, was confident. I knew I had to go forward. I knew we weren't expecting that, and I knew I was going to knock him straight out of stride, and he was never going to get back into it once he stayed on his chest. He's right, right now so comes the bad you. news, because you've experienced this. Nobody's been, a, nobody's been able to retain this title, including you. Oh, I'll, I'll retain it. This is my belt. I'm giving this to my boy, my little boy, Sean. Beat the best boy. one. You'll beat the best. Who's, who's better than him, yeah?